Yep, you see it. I have some things to say about this. Let's talk about it. What's up, people? Welcome to the channel where we talk about music licensing, music production, and music business. If you love any of the previously mentioned, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all my latest content. And make sure you hit that bell icon so you know exactly when that new content is dropping. So I'm back, man. I got a little piece of gear. We're going to do a little gear review today. And it is the Zingo Synergy Core from Antelope Audio. Thank you to Antelope. They sent this over for me to test out, play around with. So I'm going to let you guys know my honest opinion about it, how I feel about it, what I think about it, and so on and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about this interface. First of all, it's a smaller interface. Like it's not super huge and bulky and take up a lot of desk space. It's even small enough to be an interface on the go. Like if you want to pack this joint up, you're setting up in a hotel, you're on the road, whatever, you're traveling. It's not going to take up a whole bunch of space and room like some of the other audio interfaces out there actually this one is actually smaller than my main studio interface that I'm using right now so yeah and it's a solid build quality as well like this joint is like this is some type of metal and you can even you can even hear it in the in the knob the handle so definitely a, a quality built interface if you dropped it it looks like it could take some drops but please like try not to drop your gear that's just not a good thing to do you shouldn't do that if you want to check out all the technical ins and outs of this thing i'll leave a link in the description below so you can geek out on all that stuff but i want to dig right into the information of where i think this thing shines and something that annoyed me a little bit so right off the bat you got two headphone jacks in the front which that's convenient like it makes sense like my other interface like I have to reach in the back I can't see it so I don't know if I'm even plugging the thing in the right thing it's just you just gotta kind of figure it out but here it's like right there you just go in the front and you have two which like every interface should have two because usually if you're recording you need headphones and somebody else is singing like we both need to hear so that's great but one of the main features that this small little thing has and it's surprising how they figured it out but it has real-time processing like real-time effects processing like you can legit put some eq some compression a preamp and it'll process it right here on the box so it's not taking up any cpu on your computer or anything like that and there is like no noticeable latency like i tried like i tried to hear the latency i couldn't hear it it wasn't significant enough but yeah like you get 37 included effects for this interface here and you can you know set the chain up however you want you can adjust those effects in real time on the fly so if you have somebody you know recording something in the mic or whatever you're doing some voiceover work or you have a bass and you want to throw some plugins on that joint or an instrument or guitar or whatever you can throw those effects on there and all of the processing is going to happen right here on this thing before it even hits your computer so that is pretty impressive now i did use this with my computer and my iPad as well. Now, obviously on the iPad, I couldn't take advantage of those real-time processing effects like I would on my desktop because on the desktop, you go in, you register the device, and then you're able to download, you know, the applications and control panels that you would use to kind of change those effects and add those effects and things like that. And that's where this really, really shines, especially if you're using it on like a laptop or like an actual computer. Unfortunately, I couldn't use that on the iPad because I didn't find any you know iOS version of this control panel if it does exist then I just couldn't find it and maybe I need to look harder but that would be dope if they if they did have something like that for iOS to where we could still use you know that real-time processing right here on the interface that would be super dope so yeah so once you go to the website and you go through all the registration you download the control panel you have this nice interface where you can kind of you know make adjustments and customize your session to your life and you can even save those settings and rename them however you want. So if you have like a particular setting that you use for streaming versus recording someone or, you know, an instrument recording or whatever, you can go in, set your plugins however, however you want, and then go ahead and save that session and you can recall it up the next time, you know, you're using the interface. So that's pretty cool. Now the 37 included effects are modeled after analog gear. So you get a nice warm analog sound, even just from the, the preamps 
alone by themselves, you get a really nice high quality preamp in this interface and the effects that come with it, like 37 are included and you can go and purchase additional ones from Antelope Audio if you want, but they sound really great as well and it adds a nice warmth to, you know, whatever you're processing. Now this is also a bus powered interface, so you don't need like an additional power source or anything like that, which made it really cool to work with on the iPad because I could just plug in that USB-C cable and then it powered everything just fine and, and worked just fine. Same with the computer. I didn't need a power source. You just plug up, plug up the USB joint and you're good to go. The front of the interface is pretty minimal, but you're able to access and control everything you need to right here. And on these smaller buttons here, if you just press and hold them, it allows you to access different menus and things like that as well. If you want to change some settings or if you want to select, you know, headphone one versus headphone two or, you know, the, the mic pre one versus mic pre two, you can do that all from um, the front of this interface. I love the fact that if you push down on the big volume knob, you can instantly mute, you know, whatever, whatever you're monitoring on, right? So if you're listening through your main studio monitors, you just click that once and it'll go ahead and mute that really quick in case somebody comes in your session trying to talk to you and you can't hear them. So you just got to hurry up, and mute it so you can hear them. Another feature that this has is loopback capability. So if you're a streamer and you need that loopback feature, this has it. Now, this is something that I experienced on my end. And I don't know if it's the software I was using or how I have Ecamm set up, but an issue that I was having was, you know, with this loopback feature, it was picking up my computer audio. So whatever was playing on the computer, you know, was just looping back, but it was creating a second instance in Ecamm to where now like, it was like loopbacking twice. So I had like Ecamm already playing the music, but then this is looping back in and it's playing the music as well as, you know, my audio from the mic and I couldn't figure out how to separate it. So I don't know if that was like an Ecamm issue or, you know, a setting that I may have missed just trying this thing out, but I'll have to go in and do some further testing to see if that was like an Ecamm and, and figure out if I just had, you know, was routing my audio in Ecamm in a weird way that caused it to do that because, you know, in the, the part where you see where your computer audio is coming in, you can turn that down. But when I turn that down, then I couldn't monitor the music that was coming out through the stream. So that was a, that was like the only little annoying thing because I would have to switch audio interfaces because it would have created just utter chaos in my, in, in my stream. So again, I'm not blaming that on the Zingo. I don't know if it was because of this or if it was because of an Ecamm setting. So I have to do some further testing, but it does have a loopback feature and it was working. I just had, you know, an extra loopback already going that it just interfered with what I was doing. Let's talk about another thing that I noticed that was really like freaking me out for a little bit. So I have a Shure SM7B, right? And the way I have it rigged with my, the studio interface that I'm using right now is I have that SM7B that's going through a cloud lifter, which is another preamp. And then it's going into my current interface. So never had any issues with buzzing or things like that with that setup. But once I tried to run that same setup with the Zingo, I had a very audible noise, like hissing, buzzing. And it was it like pretty much to get rid of it, I would have to turn the mic preamp on the Zingo down, but then the volume would just be too low. And then even if I, you know, if I threw in one of the included 37 effects, threw in like one of those preamps, then that would just amplify the buzzing. I couldn't get rid of the buzzing. So what I found was once I unplugged the cloud lifter, which is the additional preamp that I had connected to the SM7B, that noise went away. So what I found was if I'm using the SM7B and for those who've ever used one, you know that that bad boy is power hungry and you need something to kind of amplify that that volume depending on depending on the setup or how you have it rigged up. But so I unplugged that and then I just plugged the SM7B directly into this interface. And what happened was the hissing went away, but the volume was still low because it's SM7B. So what I did because this joint has, you know, those real time processing effects, I just added one of Antelope's audio's preamps and I added the preamp and I added, I think I added, I might've added a compressor and a, and a EQ or just the EQ. I can't remember exactly, but I know for sure I had a preamp. I know for sure I had an EQ. So I added those and then that boosted the volume to the point where I didn't need the cloud lifter 
connector anymore for the SM7B. So I could just plug that directly in here, use those onboard processing plugins, and I was good to go. So that was kind of like a pro con thing because I guess the con was like, I had to kind of change my setup a little bit, but the pro is that I didn't need an extra piece of gear to boost the volume of my SM7B. So yeah, it was a, it was a decent trade off. So yeah, so if you use like an SM7B and you wanna use it with this, that is something to keep in mind if you're using like a cloud lifter, you may get some extra gain hissing noise if you try and use that with this as well. Now, when I use this with my iPad, didn't have any issues. I was able to plug it directly into the USB-C port and yeah, like it just, it worked, it recognized it on the iPad and I used it in GarageBand as well as to just play, you know, play some music from my emails and other apps and things like that. Worked flawlessly. Yeah, no issues there. So plug that joint in and it just works. Love it. Overall, I think this is a really solid interface. The price point is around 500 US dollars as of the making of this video so you know considering what you can do with a smaller portable interface from antelope audio but doesn't take up a whole lot of room but you have that power of real-time processing with very 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 minimal latency if at all and the ability to have that loop back feature I think it's a, a good interface for you know for the the price point so yeah so overall I'm not mad I got good quality I got good audio quality really love the way um, that sm7b came through with my vocals you know just doing some some voiceover stuff yeah just really warm um, as far as the preamps and as far as those analog plugins question of the day which audio interface are you currently using and how do you like it let me know in the comment section below again if you want to check out this Zingo Synergy Core interface from Antelope Audio just click the link in the description below you can go ahead and check that out along with all the other stuff that they offer they make some pretty cool gear so hopefully you found this video helpful if if you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.